I'm going to tell you about the program in Siena. Uh, we have had a 20-year partnership with the University of Siena, Tulane and Siena. Uh, we redid the, 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 the nature of the program the, two years ago. This will be our third year. Harry Houdini got started as an escape artist when he asked a friend, well, what do you think of my act? And they said, well, there's one act trick you do really well. It's an escape trick. Why don't you focus your whole career on that? Well, there was one thing we did really well. It was teach the international legal protection of art. And so we've now focused the entire program on that. If you were to come, you would take, uh, you would be offered uh, a core course, which is a double course, which gives you the general framework. And then your three others, of which you could take two for credit. The core course is taught by me and Professor Franchoni, who's an Italian uh, expert on international treaties that govern the protection of cultural heritage, uh, the right for, to, to discover things that you find underwater and bring them back, treasure, all sorts of things like that. And what's remarkable is you hear him lecture as you realize he was there when they drafted these things. So he'll say, you know why Article 5 is in this treaty? Because the Americans insisted on it, and then they wouldn't sign the treaty after we put it in. Uh, he has a kind of, the kind of knowledge of these treaties that comes with having been there. Myself, I teach the, 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 something more mundane. I teach when you can get a work of art back on the pedantic and legalistic ground that it's yours. You own it. It belongs to you. And that can get really weird in an international setting. Is it possible in California for a, an elderly lady to bring an action against a museum in Vienna that has a picture on the wall which was stolen by the Nazis from her father and claim that there's jurisdiction because the museum is doing business in California because people from California go to the museum and can find its literature at the local consulate? The answer in California is yes. Uh, there are all kinds of wrinkles to the international protection of art law you don't find in first-year property. Uh, the second course is uh, one in uh, the criminal protection, the international criminal system that protects art. It's taught by Herb Larson. He's been a defense attorney most of his life and seems to know an incredible amount of how, how people steal art. Uh, the last part of it is taught by... Uh, Colonel Matthew Bogdanos of the United States Marine Corps, who knows a lot about how they steal it, how to catch them, and how to get it back. He uh, was in charge of getting back the art looted in the first days of the uh, U.S. invasion, when Baghdad fell. Thousands of things disappeared. He got a lot of them back. He wrote a book about it called Thieves of Baghdad, which he, and he foolishly donated all the proceeds to uh, help more artifacts be recovered by Iraq. Uh, and there's a nice, students have found a nice sort of complementarity between the defense attorney and Colonel Bogdanos, whose full-time occupation is that he's a prosecuting attorney in New York. Uh, we have another course that's taught by uh, Professors Pavoni and Lanzarini, which is on the protection of art in wartime. And Pavoni taught here last year. Students liked his course. Lanzarini will teach a, a mini course this spring, although not on the same topic. They've both gotten very good reviews from the students. They're both very knowledgeable. We have another course taught by Holly Flores. She's in the Tulane Art Department. Because the criminal system is so leaky, it's very important what the ethical standards are that are applied by museums and galleries. If you show up with a picture, will I take it without asking too many questions? She knows about that sort of thing and teaches a course. She's, this will be a third year teaching for us. She has a PhD in, uh, as it happens, Tuscan medieval art history from NYU, which is probably one of the fifth best, five best programs in the world. She gives tours of the Uffizi to our students and tours of the city at night, which are optional. Sometimes accompanied by my wife, who has a PhD in Renaissance Sienese art history uh, from Princeton. Uh, the next course is taught by uh, Holly, uh, excuse me, by, by Elizabeth Townsend Guard. All the other courses protect art. Her course deals with the protection of the artist. Uh, what, if I've painted it, can they alter it? Uh, can they imitate it? Uh, and she teaches intellectual property here, and this is one of her interests. Classes are four days a week, uh, Monday through Thursday. Fridays, the first two Fridays, we take field trips. We go out and taste wine. Uh, and visit archaeological sites. We visit the Uffizi. 
in past the past two years. We've had somebody from the Carabinieri tell us about how they catch art thieves in Italy. They're the group of the Italian police who are in charge of doing that. Um, and then the final Friday, you take exams. It's a three-week program. Before the program starts this year, we're going to have an international symposium on uh, how do you enforce all of these remedies for the protection of art. And we've invited some very leading people. Most of the people who participate in the program will be giving papers. Other people will be, too. It's entirely voluntary. If you want to see it, uh, it runs the 3rd and 4th of June. The program, our regular program, starts the 6th, but you're welcome to attend if you want. No charge. It's a beautiful city. It looks like it's un been untouched uh, since the end of the Middle Ages, the early Renaissance. And it's, it's only an hour from Florence. Okay.